Now, here's where it becomes interesting. If you're willing to commit for a longer period of time, like you did with your cell phone, so if you're willing to sign up for a four-year plan, we do three things for you that are different than what you do with your gas station. One, we lock the price for you. You would pay the same amount per mile today as you would four years from now. Now, if anybody wants to take that bet with me on gasoline, I'm taking bets right now. <laughs> Two, in some of our plans, we allow you to do the Metro PCS program. In other words, if you want to sign for the all-you-can-drive program, we have an all-you-can-drive one-time fee program, one monthly fee program for all you can drive. Why are we doing that? Because we're trying to entice in the people who drive the most first. 25% of the cars in America, the top 25% of the cars in America use 66% of gasoline. We want to get these guys off the road first. 40% of the cars in America use less than 10% of the gasoline in the aggregate. Those are the urban dwellers. They're effectively parking more than driving the car. Those are the last cars we want to get off the road. The way we priced cars today, the way we've priced electric cars today, and the appeal that it had was more towards the urban dweller, the one that drives very little distance and has a lot of money to spend. Those guys didn't make a dent on our usage of oil at all. And so we're focusing more on the guys who drive the most. Hence, all you can drive programs are more appealing towards these guys who use a lot of miles a year. And the third thing we do is if you sign up for a long period of time, four years, lots of miles, we give you a rebate check back, just like the phone companies did. Now, depending on the location, depending on where you are in the world, depending on the price of gasoline at the time, that rebate check varies. I'll give you an example about Europe. Price of gasoline is roughly at $9 a gallon right now. You sign up to a four-year program for about 20,000 miles a year. You get a check that roughly comes up to about $200 a month. $200 a month check rebate to your car financing company would get you a free car. Effectively, we will pay for the financing on the electric car. Just like a cell phone. You pay for what you use, miles. You don't pay for the device or you feel like you don't pay for the device, even though it's your device. And we set the infrastructure and we become the operator. We effectively introduce a new model, an operator, into this business. The operator takes the risk of setting the network up front. It's a huge risk. How big of a risk? Our investment is in the, roughly in the range of about $500 per car in the car park in the nation. Israel has two million Cars, when we will be done with setting up the infrastructure for Israel, we'll put about a billion dollars in infrastructure into the country. U.S. will be about a hundred billion dollars. Now it sounds like a lot of money. I want to put you in a bit of perspective on that. To set up a network across the nation for all cars to be able to plug in two places during the day and night and to exchange batteries wherever they drove across our nation will be a hundred billion dollars we can argue whether it be a bit more, maybe 110, 120 billion dollars. That's two months worth of oil imports for this country. Two months. So imagine President 44, I don't care what you vote, gets an offer on their table to get off oil for two months worth of oil imports, spend over a period of about 10 years. If they really want to make an impact, they can spend it over a period of about four years. So that by the time they're done with their first term, it's done. How long should they think about that question? <laughs> the amount of energy it requires, it puts a, a new additional set of electrons that need to be put on the, on the grid. In Israel, we're adding all the electrons from renewable sources. We're effectively buying, pre-buying, solar generation at the same amount as we're going to use for these cars. So in Israel, we've actually gone and identified a region in the south of the country, drew that circle around and said, we're going to put a major solar thermal power plant that will generate exactly the same amount of electrons as every car in Israel will need. We went into the, uh, the government and said, we'd like to do that. We'd like to put the plant ourselves. And they said, that's a lot of land. 
And we drew it again and said, just, we're going to put a plant right here. We're going to pay the money. We're gonna, it's a lot of land. I said, well, what if I told you we could dig into the ground and find oil that will serve all the cars in the country for the next hundred years? And they said, we tried. There is no oil. So what if we could prove to you that we can find the oil in the ground that would actually get all the cars? And they said, if you can prove it to us, we'll let you dig. We said, we're going to dig up instead of digging down. And we're creating the first virtual oil field. If you think about what we do, generation, distribution, cars with batteries, and you have a virtual oil field. The cost of that field, the generation side, plus the grid, combined is one year worth of imports of oil for the country. Same thing would happen here in the States. To create all the renewable sources for all the cars, for the life of the country, wind, solar, you name it, would be $500 billion. On top of the $100 billion, that's $600 billion. That's less than our bill for 2008 for oil imports. One year. Now, how hard can it be? The model is exactly the same model as we're looked, we've looked at with cellular phone. You don't need to do every single rural area first. You start from urban centers. I'll give you an example. We're on the west coast. If you looked across the entire west coast corridor, San Diego all the way up, we're bringing the Canadians too because they're nice people, and you plug the whole thing together, British Columbia all the way down to Tijuana, to San Diego, you'll start seeing that there are Transportation islands connected with arteries, with corridors. LA, about a 100 mile radius, radius of a battery. So if you're driving in LA, by the way, most people from LA don't know there's anything outside LA, you, you actually are within a corridor that your battery will always last you. LA as an island is connected through four arteries, one up north, two east, one south. Depending if you're going to the desert, you're going to Vegas, the next island. The one south going to San Diego. The one north going to San Francisco Bay Area. San Francisco Bay Area is another 100 mile radius island. And as you go up, Oregon, Washington State, British Columbia, you can see these islands connected with arteries. On the artery, on the five, if you had a switch station every 25 miles, all you need is to know where you want to swap. And it's actually a more convenient car for you at that point in time. Now, we haven't stopped in building this as a paper. This was a paper about a year and a half ago. We, we went out to countries. We started talking to countries. And on January 21st, 2008, we got our first country. State of Israel stood up and said, we're going to do this. President and Prime Minister said, this is the vision for the country. It's the number one national project for the country. And they put one policy in place. They said a very simple policy, because we didn't ask for money from the state. As a matter of fact, when, when I came and presented it to the prime minister, he said, that's a great idea. Go get money from some other crazy guy. I'm not going to give you any money. <laughs> but he said, if you find $200 million, I'll give you all the policy you want. What do you want? And we said, I need an acceleration plan so that you convince people this is what they want to do. And they put a very simple plan in place. You buy a gasoline car in Israel, you're taxed 72%. You buy an electric car in Israel, you're taxed 10%. And then they said, by the way, we like our tax money. We need it. We want the mix to always be about 50%. If more and more people will start buying this 10% this electric car, we're going to raise both taxes up. But we're going to keep the dif difference 60% until we get to 50 and 110. When we get to 50, 110, that means nobody's buying gasoline-based cars. And if you are buying gasoline-based car, you must be stupid. You should pay 110%. <laughs> and they left it. That's the only policy they put into place. That's it. 